all right awesome so i didn't really take you guys on css units but when we come to css units css units is like um a unit of measurements whenever you are giving things like width height margin pixels padding all these things that has to do with you giving it a number for the space or anything or even if it's for the border so we have two types of units i'm going to use a documentation to take through the type and sure i go through everything very well i'm going to use um mdn documentation just a thing we have two types of units we have um relative units we have relative units i'll try to write it somewhere so i can see it um going to use relative unit sorry for the background noise and absolute unit So um, the difference between these two units is that this relative unit is responsive. What do I mean by responsive? Let's say that I am on a desktop, I'm on my laptop right now, right? If I'm using a relative unit, the way I'm seeing it, um, the way I'm seeing something that has relative unit on my laptop will be the way I will see it on any other device, mobile, tablet, or anything. Why? Because it is re relative. Most of these units are relative, maybe to the parent element, that is where they are, or they are relative to like the 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 size of the screen. What do I mean, like relative to? It means that before the browser calculates their unit, it has to check. Okay, what is the unit for the parent element, or what is the unit for the device screen? Then to now use what it has gotten to what to calculate it properly. And when it does that, maybe something that is supposed to that is very large on um on your desktop screen, when you use relative unit, when it gets to mobile screen, it adjusts it because the windows and the 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 screen has changed, right? To mobile. So it will try to adjust like to that mobile. But absolute units, and it, and I'm still going to talk about the examples of relative absolute units are the ones that they remain unchanged. However, it is wherever it is, they remain unchanged. Right, they are majorly measured by pixels. And what does pixels mean? Pixels mean that look at you are looking at your phone right now, or you're looking at your your laptop, or anything that you are using to join this call. If probably um your eyes is seeing your screen as one solid background, but actually no, your system, your screen, whatever it is, is made up of tiny, tiny little LEDs, LED bulbs, very tiny ones, and one of those things that lights up individually and that's what they use for like creating colors the system is for creating colors and everything it lights up like individually so you can give them a, um, a uniform color you can change the color anything so now if i say 100 pixels now what you just mean is to like count get 100 pixels of my screen for me and that is it so in any device that i am in you're just going to get that 100 pixels no matter if the screen is big or if the screen is small, you get. So um, this has not even loaded itself. My God. Let's see. I'll just let's just see. I'll try another one. Let me look at this. So we have um some examples of relative unit and absolute unit. For example. Um, relative units example is percentage. Um, we have percentage. We have viewport width. That's VW, and viewport height. That's VH. Um, then we have um, root EM. That's the root. Um, it, that one is calculated relative to the root size. That's the root size is like the size of the your HTML font size which is 16 pixels by default in every browser. The root EM is 16 pixels. So if you say 2 REM, it means 2 times 16. So it, it, you apply relative to the root EM. Then we have EM. I think the EM by default is um, 15 pixels. I think that one is relative to like um, the font size of the current place that you're applying it to. So um, then we have absolute 
things. The example of absolutely mean, we have pixels, which is the most convergent one. We have points, PT. We have PC and so on and so forth. But let's try to read through this. Okay. Many CSS proper like width, margin, padding, and font size. Take a length. Okay, that's awesome. Then absolute length units. Here are some. Absolute length units are based on actual physical units and are generally considered to be the same size across devices. So you get, um, let me try to demonstrate this talk talk that I'm doing. You see this thing back? So let's see that I want, let me, let me increase it to like 400. Let me increase the width to like 400 pixels. There's it again. We are width. Let me give it a width of 400 pixels. Oh, shit. So refresh, refresh. You see back? Okay. So let me use F12 and resize this. So if you want to check um, if your site is responsive, if you press F12, it will bring you to this place, right? So dimensions responsive is selected by, by default. So you can see all the phone sizes that you can try to see how your device looks on them. But this one that I am in now, device, um, dimensions responsive, you can just be resizing to see how they look. So if I resize it, just take a look. You see that you see that it's not okay it's actually resizing here but you can see that it's going up it's actually going up right you can see it's going up let me give something like 600 pixels um 600 pixels the one that i know that we put and instead of using this i'm going to use yeah awesome so i'm going to use this now look at can you see what just happened it added scroll bars for you at the bottom. Why? Because it's not resizing itself to fit that your window. This is like 600. Okay. Let me use something else. 768. 768. So now this 768 is the width size for tablet. For the tablet, for tablet, phone tablet. This is the width size. Now we are below 768 pixels. I think yeah, this is this is seven hundred and sixty-eight pixels here. See seven hundred. This is a tablet screen size. So let's say that I'm not on tablet, right? I want to be like something on mobile. Mobile is from three four eight actually, and you can see that it's adding this horizontal scroll bar at the end for you, which is not really a good idea. Have you imagined like going to a site on your mobile device and you just be using your hand to like? Be, be scrolling if you scroll down you see that some things have caught right then you now start using your hand to like push it so that you see what is at the other end and that is not a good user experience right so this is what pixels does for you but let me say that let me say i gave it a hundred percent a hundred percent now you see that there's no scroll by here and this hundred percent is it's like what it means like it should take up all the entire width of that screen that is 100 percent is like calculated by percentage relative to like um either the parent element or like the um the the, the entire document let me put it like that or relative to entire to the, like entire screen the reason why it is here it is relative to entire screen is that the container element, I did not actually specify a width in them. If I specify a width for them, let me say I gave them a width of 50%, it will take up all the entire 50% of that um, parent element. So what this means, 100% of the parent element, that is what it means there. And it's a very relative, like awesome and very relative unit. Um, let me see, where was I, where was I? Okay, this place. So, and CSS, one pixel is formally defined as one over 96 of an inch. All the absolute length are based on this definition of the pixels. But when that standard was originally formulated, most monitors had a resolution of 1024 times 768 and a DPI dot per inch of 96. So if you are conversant um, with um, IoT devices, that is input and output devices, you know that this 1024 is like um the default um byte size for 1024 bits makes one byte and so on and so forth and you can see like this actually relates to like technical things in some te in like in some parts but i'm trying to like remove the technicality just know that the pixels should present when you say one pixel it means one dot in this like your entire screen that you're seeing now mm -hmm. this does just blah 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 
So we have another one centimeters cm. We have um millimeters mm. We have um inches in. We have pt point pc. You see, all these things are absolute units. And the most, I think, the one that most everybody uses pixels for absolute when they want to deal on absolute unit. Um, then we have relative unit. Um, relative units are related to another element size or settings. This one is what they say here is that they are considered to be the same size across devices, but this one is relative to something, it's relative to element size or settings. For example, relative font size of an element may be calculated using the parent element font size. So let's em the CSS em unit gets its name from a typographical unit in typography, the term em was originally a reference to the width of the capital M. Ah, I don't even understand this thing. When used with font size for e EM inherit the font size, like I said, EM inherit the font size of its parent element. Right? So if I get see that one now, right? So if I give the container 16 p p pixels and I come here, the divs, I give them like there's a text inside and I give them like two EM to do two times that 16 pixels. Then we have root em this is relative this relative unit is not affected by the size of setting of a pen node and is instead based on the root of the document and the root of the document is the html element that that html tag has like a predefined site for it which is i think is 16 pixels or in most browsers or in all browsers 16 pixels okay you can see right here right this is 16 px 16 pixels so percentages or the percent size relative to the parent size, you can see it also. Then view view port width, not view width, please view port width. One percent of the view port width. Now for this view port width, eh, for this view port width, I'm going to try to explain it using this right now. View port width means that it should take up the entire width of this thing now that you are seeing, right? Which is almost equivalent to um hundred percent. Like it's almost equivalent to hundred percent, but in most times it might cause horizontal scroll bars to be added because when you give something um a hundred percent view width and you have another thing that is beside it, it will push those things out of proportion. Why? It is trying to occupy every every width that you can see, like the length of every width that you can see. Hey, hey. So if you give it like a wrong something, if you just push and there's other elements around it, if you just push them out of proportion and add scroll bars. Now for the viewport height, that's VH, it takes up all the height of everything that you can see here. Example, let's change this to um hundred view height. It's calculated by hundred. You can see right. This is one div. Remember, I gave all of them a padding. This is one div. And it's taking the entire height of everything that I can see. Oh yeah, it's not even. It's even taking both the margin that is supposed to be there. You can see back. Now this is the second div. This is the third one, right? Now this these are what it does. And I feel like this viewport um this viewport um height is something that makes at least some sort of sense. Why does it make some sense? Even if they add like scroll bars. To the bottom there is no there is no problem actually because the user will still have to scroll so it's fine except that you're building like a landing page that i don't want them to be able to scroll through it and hey and hey that one is like that one is very much different so um now what is the difference between okay i've explained the difference when should you use a viewport width and when should you use um sorry when should you use the pixels and when should you use or percentage that's the question that you want me to answer right let me see okay so i'll tell you when to use it so if you are working on something right and you want to like you're you are working on something that requires um how do i do this thing now Okay, let's take this D for instance, right? And maybe, just maybe, I want it like, you know, there are other Ds behind, um, on beneath it, right? And 
and maybe I want you to like take up the entire width of the container of the parent element, but not the height, the entire height, right? You use percentage. You use percentage so that it will properly calculate relative to where it is. For example, now if I wanted to like use my hand and do mago mago, and I give this thing 300, no, 400, 500, let me say 550. Five, Why is it not giving 550? 500. 520. I mean, they don't have. Okay. Okay, there's there's small scroll bar here. So let me. I had, there's no scroll bar. You can see this Magomago that I did, but it, it looks fine. It looks okay. Nothing spoiled, Abby. Uh -huh. it, it is taking up 100% of this particular screen size. Oh, yeah. what, what of when I expand it? You see, it's now taking up half. So you see the magomago there. So if you want something that I want it to like take up the entire width, you get. I want it to take up the entire width, and um, on any devices that on any device that it is the best thing and the most logical thing is to give it a hundred percent. Hundred percent means I take everything. Had turning every every just take all of them. I dash you. You see. And to just take no matter how, no matter how you resize it, no matter how. If I try to like drag this thing now, you see it's just it's just responsive and it's just beautiful, like that. Learning CSS is actually very important if you like want to scale through CSS very well. And after that, so what if for the height now I give it a hundred percent height? Um, it's not going to matter really. Let me refresh this. So now for this hundred percent now remember that they are in containers right and i think that was why it's like they are in containers so if i give them a hundred percent height right a hundred percent height of the container like making it like squash them all together like this but assuming that the the parent containers have heights and i specify hundred percent to take up the height of all the entire container but and if i use vh vh it will take up you know the normal vh so this one now is different because even if I use like, even if I use like 200 pixels, any pixels that I, I use, the user is still going to scroll down. So maybe adding scroll bars to it, even if I'm using like, it, it, it's not a bad idea at all, at all, at all. It's not a bad idea because the user will still scroll down. And what we are trying to avoid is horizontal scroll bars, which is really very ugly. You get except you're building a landing page landing page is like something that you just see on this first screen there's no scroll button there's no scroll bars anyway so let's keep it back the way it was and let's keep this one back the way it was yeah so this is like the difference so use width when you are dealing with horizontal you're giving a horizontal unit use um percentage where you are giving like a horizontal length that's like this and for height, you can use pixels, you can use percentage, whichever one works for you while you are working. And then when you are giving things like um padding or margin, you can use pixels for them, it's fine. But, but for padding, you can use pixels. For the length, you can use pixels, you can use anything. But you see margin, you have to be like a bit careful with margin, right? You don't want to give like imagine that would be like too too much such that for example now if i use pixels to, if i let's say let me give them imagine top right imagine imagine top imagine top i want and i give like 200 pixels you see how it looks like so you have to be careful with this one now because let's say that if 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 i this thing on you see here now it's a bit closer so it's not even far from here but you see on this device now look at where it is like way down here right so instead of to avoid something like this i can use the percentage you need to give this thing now i can say just give it a margin top of 10 
percent. You see, and you will feel that no matter how okay, it will just be adjusting it relative to the screen size, and it it looks a bit better. Let me reduce the percentage to like um five percent, just a very very small percentage. Nothing, nothing really much. And you can see right, it's almost like there's no difference. But 200 pixels is like it's an absolute unit. But this one to just be calculating everything and it will not overflow or do anything for you. Just be calculating related to the screen size you get. Uh -huh. So that's how like that's the major thing that you need to know about um units. So please excuse me for some time. Yeah, I'm back. Sorry, just had to take some water. So if you use height 100%, one column will take all the screen. Actually, no, it doesn't work like that. Unless, unless like, um, like the parent container. You know this, the, why, the reason why that one didn't work is that um, they are inside, like, they are inside something. They are inside, excuse me, they are inside container element. So if I give the 100% and I didn't give the appearance element a, a height, okay. Enough talking, bruh. Enough talking. Let me select dot container. Dot container um, and comma. I select um, dot stick. Right? And now for the sorry for the height please try try as much as possible most of the time to use pixels for like the ones that we take up um the what are they calling it again the screen space or the screen size please excuse
back. So I have to update my position because of the gun mode. Oh, where I will say, excuse me again. So where was I? Yeah, I was about to show you. So you should be careful, like when you are using the height with percentage, right? You know that when you say, um, when you say, on, let's say that you want to share, you want to share like the all the divs that are here, you want to share like the percentage that they will take on this screen equally, right? You don't want them to like to have scroll bars. You know that this screen is made up of 100%. So you can use um something like, um I can give it like, okay, we have two container here. How many containers do we have? We have, okay, we have actually three divs that are inside the main element. And these three divs are supposed to like take um, a certain percentage equally. They are supposed to share the size of the main element. So I can give something like the height. I can give it the height of um, calculate. So this calculates, this is a function that you can use to like calculate the height. So I can say 100% divided by the three element that we have. So when I give this now, and I come here and I give the height of all the child elements, I give it... Um, this is supposed to be those flex, sorry. Supposed to be those flex and comma but stick. That's to select the three of them. I'm going to give it this height and I'm going to come here and specify the height to be hundred percent. Hundred percent. I think I also have to give it a bit. The reach should still be hundred percent. The reach can still be hundred percent. Yeah, I don't understand. I understand what is the first of all the reduce. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. So I'm um, trying to understand why it's actually removed. It's any mistake here. Okay. I think it has to do with what I'm saying. Like, if I'm giving each of them like a hundred percent, right? And this entire was supposed to be hundred percent, it's not going to work. Let me try pixels. Let's see. I have a five hundred pixels here. Okay. Weird. Very weird. It's supposed to apply the styles to everything here. I'm just going to change it. It's supposed to select the three of them. Why is it? I need to change for this one. Okay, okay, okay. I gave it the hundred pixels here. Like I can give it the hundred percent. Yeah. So you can see that all of them like takes up hundred percent of the and five hundred pixels. Let me change this again to hundred percent. Yeah, it doesn't work, and I think pretty much why it doesn't work is. Because they have to sort of share that hundred percent equally among themselves, which is what I did here. Divided by three. It doesn't. It's not even properly. Let me expect. Let me expect this. Okay. It's it's not applying it. Okay, let's use let's yeah exactly. Let's use hundred VH. I think that is what is suitable for this place. Yeah, exactly. So uh hey, it's supposed to sorry, it's supposed to be hundred view height, not excuse me, not um hundred percent, right? Reason because 100% is it's like 
this entire screen should be 100 percent so giving you 100 percent height doesn't make sense if you wanted to like take like percentage relative to the viewport you should use that vh that's why i say if you're using vh viewport height is fine there's no complication there and to make sure that all of them taste equally i have to like use the capacitor to divide it by three right so um if there is no more so if you use one height 100 percent one column will take all the screen so you can see that no one column will not take all the screen if you use the height of 100 percent actually not work unless you use a view height if you want one column to take the height of everything you select that one that you want to take the height and give it a hundred viewport height okay that's that's fine so are you guys with me Roy Nambi are you with me Uh, I hope you are with me. I don't want to ask all the questions. Excuse me. Ah. I've been seeing this thing now. Let me know if this if my laptop is charging now. Okay, charging. Sorry to be too quick. Okay. I've seen most cases where max width or height is used. Yes, exactly. So, okay, it's nine for now. We still have time to talk about other things. So, max height is a very um. I think max height is like a very very beautiful um. A very beautiful to use a very beautiful height property. Max height, max width property to use for what for responsive units. Okay, so you might have seen those documents that if you have, like, when they are on small screens like this, they will take up the entire page. But when you start, like, expanding them, it gets to a point that they stop growing, and they now start adding spaces around them, right? So you use that, you achieve that with um, the, the max width property. So um, this I specify the container, right? I'm going to give them a max, a max width. Because max width, you use max width to like max width like what you can use to like see very well. So I can give it the max width of six hundred pixels, right? Meaning that it should not grow more than six hundred pixels. So let's see if this should see, actually work. You can see, right? You can see it's actually space. So um, let me position this at the center, like I told you about. I'm going to try to position this thing at the center now. Um, okay. Just here, yeah, I'm going to give it a margin of auto. Margin of auto. Okay, exactly. This is what I wanted to do. I don't know why it's pushing my margin top. I think margin is top. Let me move this margin top. And instead, give um, all of them to that margin of margin top. Of twenty pixels. So what is just going to happen is that it's going to apply margin um between these elements. Oh my god! I think I'm mixing. I'm mixing up something. But well, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I'm just just going to do this here. I'm just going to do it like this because. I feel like it doesn't really matter that much to what I'm explaining. So um coming up up here right now, right? You see that these things are the center. And you can see sorry, you can see something now, like this should tell you something. Why is it at the center? First of all, use margin, like I say, give it the width and a height before you do what? Sorry for the background noise. Oh my God.
I'm very sorry for the background noise. Yeah. So I feel like that's what you see in a Nigerian household. So sorry, pardon me for that. Um so you should look at this and you can you can see like the spaces between this thing. And the reason is because I gave the mass width of 600, I positioned it at the center and I told it like when it gets to 600 pieces, I have stopped increasing the width for me. Just leave it at there. And you can see I, I've given you expo. This is how you can achieve this. You use margin and height to position it at the center, right? And when you do that, you can actually give this a margin top and a margin bottom and left and right of auto. Or you use auto to position all of them since it's just one card. I feel like the reason why we can't see that we have like a bunch of cards which you can screw. You get so there's no point in pushing at the center, and you can now use that mass width to give it a mass width for where you should like um the length of width that it should span. You get what I mean, right? Um, maybe you should span like um I think this should be like um 500 or 400 pixels. Then when you now minimize this, it will like take up the entire um width of the screen so if i decide to remove this now this must be property you feel like to just behave normally you see bah? and if i put it again and it will apply the control right so it will never surpass that 600 pixels and it's a, it's a very beautiful way to like um position some things and if you feel like if you go to most websites they usually have like their on desktop they usually have like their um registration and login form like this uh -huh. then, you, then when you find out that when you now access them on mobile it fills your screen so i feel like this is one trick that they use to achieve something like that get okay okay so um i okay so i think i've explained that and it's the same thing for the mass height specify a maximum height for it and when it grows as it's growing when it gets to that height it will like stop and stop growing and start adding spaces like it's just like it's it will start adding margin around it to make sure that it is not like growing the element itself is not growing out of the specified width or height okay oh um, many other question on width height or units so i can proceed to the next one okay i believe not um so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take read i'm going to just comment out all these things and I want them to be the way it was before. It was at pixels, pixels, right? Yep. Sorry. Pixels and pixels. So I can probably demonstrate this very well. Yeah. Okay. So going back to the initial question, we started with um, CSS positioning and its attribute, right? Okay. Now we have five, maybe six type of CSS positioning. We have static, relative, absolute, sticky, and what was the last one again? Fixed. Yeah. And then we have Z index, but Z index is not really a position for us. Oh, no. Maybe it is. Maybe it's not. But you get what I mean, ba? So um. <laughs> I'm going to try to demonstrate all of them for us. Okay, so how do I do that? Let's start with um static. So um by default, every element on a page is positioned static. Static is just like this. The way it is now is positioned static. It is stacked on top of each other. You see all these things, ba. You see that they are stacked on top of each other. Even though, like, forget if I added space to the parent element, you know, they could have had spaces, but these um, sibling divs, we call the sibling divs because they are side by side. You see that they are stacked on top of each other, right? Then these are the default positioning for it. Okay. So that's for state, um, for static, right? Yeah. Then we have relative. So, um, for relative, um, giving something, I'm going to um, select an element here. I'll be, okay, I'll use this dot stick. So for to position an element on relative dot stick, 
just like a normal positioning. To give something a position of relative, it's your positioning, yeah, like giving it a position. Position is like, um, for example, you go to an event, you sit down, and the usher comes to tell you, okay, this is not your position, and invites you to the high table where you should stay, right? And that's like, that's like how positioning works in CSS. So that's just the idea of positioning, changing the places where they are, giving them, taking them to that place and so on and so forth. So I'll try to um, explain this with real life terms so that you can understand. So for position relative, if I were to explain it with a real life scenario, right? It's like going to an event. Yeah, you are at an event and there is an empty table where you are. And only is a, is a, that like is on that table. There's no other people on that table, right? And you have like I, I mean the round table, you have like five chairs around it with plates. You're the only one at that table, and you know that definitely no one is going to come. Or let's say that everybody is giving like one table each, right? So if you if you are in the second table, if you are in the second chair and there are two more chairs around you, you can you can decide to I don't want to sit here again, I want to sit here. So I can get a better view of like what is going on. I want to sit there. Nobody is going to come and take up your space because it's assumed that you're the one that has that table. And you can stay in any position where you right, where you want to stay around that table, right? Nobody will come and take a position. That is position of relative for you. Um, and you will see that maybe you can sit left, you can sit right, you can go all the way to opposite end of where you are sitting before, which is like the top or the bottom. These are the positions that you can take, right? And nothing really happens. Nobody will come and take any of the chairs that you left. So this is similar to um, position of relative. It positions an element relative to where it is, or relative to the space around it. But you can decide to move it from one place to another using top, bottom, left, and right. Giving it a top, and you have to, I think, you use pictures for them. Uh, then you want to make them relative to like even when they are sizing, you want them to be at that place relative wherever they are sizing, and you can use percentage to give them. So you can give the top, bottom, left, and right. It will still be at that point in time, at that place in time, and nothing is going to happen, right? So for example, let me minimize, let me minimize it so I can be seen it at the same time. Okay, let me give this um a top of zero, top of zero. Something happened, right? Okay. Top of zero. Give it um left. No, not left, right. Of zero. You can see that I feel like there's nothing happening, right? Because I like I said, it's still at that point where it is. So let me say I giving I'm giving it a top of um thirty pixels. Okay. It's 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 and I'm going to give it a right of 20 pictures. Okay. And let me give it a right. Um, let me give it left, actually. To push it, I want to push it to the right. So I'll use left. Push it to the right. And I'll maybe I'll give it a left of 100 pictures. So that is left where it is, right? I can go ahead and give it like a left of. Um, let me try percentage to see if we could push it all over to the end. Exactly. So it pushing is it it just pushed it all over to the end for me. And you can see as it's like it's left, it has created a loophole here. And as a matter of fact, like nothing, nothing is going to happen. That loophole that it has created, right? Nothing is going to happen to that loophole. So it off. Let me give it 80 percent. Just to make sure. Okay. So you can see like this is where it is, right? There's nothing unique going on there. Like this just remove it and position it by this side. And everything that is positioned is just basically on the space that it can occupy or contain. Okay. 
So if I say, let me give it um a top of minus. So, but you can use minus like big things. Like if you want this, like go above where it's supposed to be. Like you can use minus to like do that and to just, you know, just make it like go all the way up or something like that. So um, that is for position of relative. Let me give another diff, a class of um, a class of um, abandon. How oh, many? Just trying to be silly. So dot abandon, right? So now, one thing with um position of absolute is that when you give them a position of absolute, right, it takes it away from the normal flow of the element. Another element move up to occupy its space. And you can position them with normal top, bottom, left, and right. You can position it with, but just know that it will not be counted among what is on the page. Again, like in terms of flow or space, it will just be like it's on its own. You get that kind of thing. An example is that, um, you go to an event, the one I explained before, um, they give, like, you just go and sit in one table like that, and you know that you are an invited guest. And um, maybe the MC or the groom calls your name to the high table. You leave your chair and go to the high table, right? Obviously, someone is going to come and take up that space, right? Or you go to a concert and you leave that concert, you want to go and buy something, if you are sitting down, maybe a show, a comedy show or something like that. If you leave that chair and go, somebody is going to, going to come and take up your seat. A public concert, though, I think it's not the one that you pay for your chair. Just something public. Someone will come and take your chair. Even in class, in class, if you are not sitting on your chair, if you leave and go, lecturer will come. And lecturer comes and you're not in the class. Or lecturer leave for a while, you too, you leave and come back. Somebody will take your chair. There's nothing you can do about it, but okay. that is for position of absolute. If I give the position of Absolute, right? Let's see. I'm going to color this element. I'm going to give it a background color of magenta so that I can actually know where it is. Magenta. That's a phantom. That's the list correctly. That's a phantom. A phantom. Okay. Why is it not picking up magenta color? Let me try to. So I'm just going to give it what we call an important tag. Let's say you want this thing to override all the. So after, much later on, we are going to do what we call CSS specific Jesus. Persistivity. Sorry about my tongue. Uh, I'm born and bred you, so you understand that. So, um, you can use this like if a style is not, but this important style is like used for overriding any other default style that is making it not apply. Please don't use this thing often. Always try to look at the specificity. Uh, that's where the issue is coming from. Probably this style that I'm giving is overriding this style because it has higher specificity in CSS. But this is just for practical things. So um, I can give this. So let me start with the basics. So um, another thing about position of absolute is that if you want to position something absolute but relative to the apparent element, you have to give the apparent element a position of relative before you start applying top and bottom. If not, if you apply top and bottom, it's a position relative to the entire document. Something like here. See where it went. I, I kept it to the top and I can give it a right of zero. You see that? This is what happens. You see where it is back. That's and you can see that it does it didn't even create any gap here. Other elements are on the chair. How did they even say that stop in it? As a as a Megan on the chair. And the way we say it in, in, in evil language, that it's sort of if a king dies or something like that, 
and then someone comes to take his place and that's just the what is happening or what is going on here okay so let me see if there's this one so i hope you guys are with me because roy i hope you are with me okay awesome so that's for um relative so i'm just going to take water Ah, I love talking over my mouth. My mouth. I don't talk that often. I do when I go about. My mouth is starting to hurt a bit. I don't want this thing to supersede the time or see the time or something like that. Okay, then what of um sticky? So for sticky is um. You want something to like that when you scroll to stick to a particular position when it gets a particular position. So let me also select another element. Um, I'll select from this place, right? Yeah, I think I'll select from the class of stick it. I already have stick, so I'll just give stick it. So let's start stick it. Copy this to make sure I don't make a mistake. But do it. I'm going to give it line. This is it, and I'm going to give it a version of sticky. Give it a top, top of um, that's a pictures. The right of um. So, let's see. Mm. What has this is a It's supposed to like when you screw, it sticks to a particular position. Okay, I'm going to just let's research about it, but I'm not that convinced it's sticking. Okay. I'm going to do it and go. Oh, 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 okay. Oh, instead of using this one, Sha, let me... Let me use something that's close to the top. Maybe this one. Yeah, this is what I want to say. So the reason why... It, why that one didn't work it was like really really down so the thing with sticky is that it it will not actually do anything right it will not do anything so the 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 point of it is that this position that i have specified when it gets to this when you are scrolling and it gets to this position i have specified it is going to stick at that position another element to flow to it for example you see this bar it is going to stick at that position. Now it's sticking. You can know that it's, it's like it's sticking to that position. But by default, that and that is just when you scroll. Let me let me try to give this class to um, a much one that like at least if I scroll, I'm able to scroll to it. Maybe add this one down here. I don't have more elements down, so I'll just put this one. Yeah. So now you can see if I scroll here, it will just stay there. Or oh, should be at the first one. 
so you can actually see what is going on so you can see that when it gets to that position it will just sit there but by default it will be on where it is normally no problem but if, if you scroll to that place it will, it will like it will stick there so i'm going to try to if this is right then i want to shift it to the right so obviously that doesn't work but the whole point of this if you want to have something that you want to like you want it to stick at a particular point that you use sticky to do is that on screw when you get to a particular point it should stick at that point for example maybe i've gone to some site and you see like when you are scrolling an element that you pass all of it like follow the other side to just stick to that place and start following you around like what i don't know that one is achieved with sticky position right you scroll then it gets a position that it wants it to stick and it will just stick at that place right that's how it, it works that's just how it works okay so um what of um what of um, we have Then after I've said static, um, relative, absolute, sticky, then we have fixed, the fixed pos position. Now for fixed, right? For fixed is um allows you to like fix at el an element at a particular place without it moving. So I'm just going to um do that with this element yeah i'm going to do it with this element now this one is one two three four the fourth one two three four five is uh, one two three four five six one two three four five okay so the fourth one that i'm going to give the class of fixed right and now in this fixed, okay, so I'm going to select it, not fixed. I'm going to give it um, a, a position of fixed, position fixed. So, Let's give it the background color of um, purple. So you can see that it's actually three here now, and it's no longer it's no longer this thing. I'll tell you the reason why. So I'm going to give it um, a top of. Let's give it the left first. Left. It's where I love where it is. I'll just give you a left of 40 pixels. Okay. Let's try 100. Just shift everything properly. Okay. Let's try 150. Okay. Awesome. So you can see that this one now is sticking to the place where it is. It's actually sticking and staying there. No matter how you screw. That is what, that is what, um, giving something a portion of stick does, of fixed does. So the difference between fix and stick is that stick you will scroll to that position first before it sticks there. Fix to stick there. It doesn't mean to screw it, will just stay there. Whatever it is, to just stick to that place. But something you have to understand is that when you use a position of fixed, it, it behaves likely to absolute. It removes it from the flow of element. So if there's any any element beneath it, after it, it will take up the space like that that element will move or will move to take up the space for example here this is supposed to be the fourth element but you see that it will happen back so if i wanted to like be able to see the element that have it complete and still stick to this space so that, that one will be able to like move under it what you will do is to give it a margin top that is equal to the space that is taken up so we are going to find um the third element that uh, this is the third one and we are give give it a class of third so i think i should be using attribute selectors to do this like oh just this place here 
this is not a way to like it's very it's not more like more to be giving um classes to your um to your destiny to be able to select them okay i'll try to use um child selector i'll be descendant dot container um is the div type is the div of nth element nth child the third child i'll be with one two how many times is it that's not the third child this is the ticket this is the fist okay the child died abandoned okay so i'll just use um the second child because that's what i want to say with it this is one this is two three abandoned Okay, abandon has left. So now abandon is this one now. So since we have abandoned this one, the third child will just be this one there. Okay. So two and oh, this one here. Yeah. And in it, I'm going to um that I'm trying to select the one under it too, not it. It's Abandon has left, so the one under it should be third. Abby, abandon, abandon, abandon. Yeah, so I'm going to give it a margin top. So, um, let's look what what height did we give a margin top of 100 pixels? 100 pixels. That's not the one that I shifted in. Let me select the third child. Okay, let me select the fourth child. Oh, it's, oh, it's, oh, it's. The fourth child. The fourth child is this one, I do. What's the what I want? I want to select this one. I've been in my eyes, the pin is. So. So the idea is the idea I'm trying to tell you is just that. Don't mind, I'm trying to confuse myself. The idea is that if you have a fixed property, a fixed something, and it's covering up what is under it, the, the, the only way to like make it like right, to be able to see what is under it, it's just simple. Give the one under it a margin top that is equal to the height of that element that gives a position of fix. For example, the height of every div here is 100 pixels. So I had to give it a margin top of 100 pixels. And you see that I did it. And it pushed this one all the way down to now fill the space that this one left. I think this one was supposed to be the one, but just confusing me um, somehow, somehow, somehow. Then for Z index, is like a way to um, show how, like, how you want element you want this one to be on top or under so let's say that let's say that i wanted this to be on, on under right? if i want this one to be under this element so that they will screw on top of it i think i'll give it um what one purple bar i'll give it a z index z index of um zero and the one after it i think Mm. Let me see the fourth child. Let me give this one. Okay, I'll select every div here. I'll give this one an important tag to make sure that it is taking this one. Make sure that's the important tag. And I'll come here and all the divs I'll, so I'll give them a z index of um, one. Let me see if it achieves what I wanted it to do. It's not even doing it. Oh well, I think it's because of it is a fixed property. Okay, let me try with this sticky shape. Let me see if they will go up on top of it. Okay, I think I know how to do that. I'm I'm going to use absolute property to, to demonstrate it now. You know how to like.
um absolute where is our abandon so i'm going to give it okay i'm going to give the top and i'm going to place it on top of this one now that one was giving um stick a bit it was giving a top of my state features i'm going to try to give it in this one down and give it 200 this one okay let me give it 300 awesome 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 and i'll just give it the right of 10 pictures 20 okay you can see the way these things are element are position right so what if i I want this pink one to be on top, right? I will use Z index to do that. So if I come here and I give this one now a Z index of one, so one, if you place it on top of this now, and this other one will take a Z index of zero. So Z index is like a way to stack elements. If you want to place them on top of the element or below the element, and here you can use Z index to achieve that. So that is all about CSS positioning um is he is he much more clearer now is it clearer okay okay you don't have do you have any questions if you do have questions just go ahead and ask okay awesome let's move to display display grid and display and flex okay let me go back to this so for displays i i thought i think i told you that we have four types of display we have um we have lock we have inline we have flex we have grid we have inline flex inline block and so on and so forth but the major ones are block inline flex and grid block means that to position them like on their own to take up a particular space on their own for inline is that if okay if i position one of this okay let me let me let me show you let me show you here so um let's say um i'm going to give one of these a position of inline um, let me just see what I can select and give it a position of inline. The one that we already selected. Okay. Okay. Let me just select all of them and give them a position of display of inline. What position, please? I feel like seeing they confuse myself or be confused. You see what just happened there? Huh? Every other thing. Like, the way everything where the level they have now this all these things the ones that are remaining here are these ones now these ones that are here is because i position them absolute and fixed so that they are now among the two the other ones look at, look at them here this one and this one so inline keeps everything on the same line that's what inline does if i change it to block and div elements are displayed block by default they will come back okay so this doesn't really affect it right so now for flex, flex is going to keep everything. Display flex. Okay, so um sorry for that. For flex, for display flex and display grid, we don't add them to child element, it, you add them to the container element. That's that's like the proper way to do it. If I select all these things now. And I cut them and I give them a display of flex, 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 flex. You see, but so I'm, it's almost like I'm building a little building block again. <laughs> so, because of this flex, like I told you by default, there's flex direction is through. It has positioned like this. But we have grid, and I, have, I think I explained flex thoroughly that day. We have grid. For display flex, there are so many properties that you can apply to display flex. I think just 
I don't even know what to explain here on the flex because I know I did justice to it last time. So if you have a question, ask me. I'm just going to move on to, to grid. Like I told you, the major difference between grid and flex is that grid is like we shrink everything for you by default and wrap everything up for you by default. Wrap your text and everything, make sure that everything is the same size and height. Flex balls, you will need like you will do some manipulation on your own for that to happen. But grid comes everything like it's just just amazing, just awesome, just brings out everything you need by default. And that's just it. So um looking at this, where's where's the where, page? Where, okay. So flex is position row by default, but grid is position column by default. So they will be they will just be the way they are like this. I think someone is asking something. Okay. So flex wrap is for your flex items. If you want them to wrap to the next line, let's that everything that I have here, I have all of them inside one div. And I want them to wrap to the next line. Okay. Let me try to demonstrate it. Enough talking. Let me just give another div. Lines nine. Just to properly demonstrate this, right? And I give it a display of flex. It's trying to like, and I give it, um, I'm going to give it a, a particular width in pixels, 500 pixels. Say hey, to make sure that I wanted to like cut it to make sure that I'm cutting it back. It's not even this one that is even cutting, so it's this one that is cutting. I'll remove it from here. Mm -hmm. So you can see this one is cutting now. Let me give it a little 400. Let's increase the width. We need to increase the width. Uh -huh. yeah. So you see that it's, it's, it's like overflowing the parent container with that. So to fix this, if I give it a flex of flex wrap of wrap, you see what it does did, but it's wrapped it to the light to the next line for me. It cuts it to the next level, and I'm still trying to understand why it's still overflowing. But that doesn't matter really. So the basic point is that to help your flex elements or items or something not overflow, and uh -huh. so that because you give them a flex wrap property, okay. I think it's a still wrap regardless. Um, flex, right? Why is this thing? See, the idea, I don't know why it was still this thing. The idea is that to make it wrap, you know, I gave these things elements now. I gave it a default width and height. That's the, the student element now. And if I want it to like 100 pixels, if I want it to still maintain that same, because by default, it's supposed to be the more it's growing and it's like, want to pass the container, it will start shrinking them to fit the container, which it might not even fit. So if, to fix that, to maintain the height of the, um child elements and the width i can give it a flex wrap so whenever it gets too like large it will just cut it to the next line and does what flex wrapping does um grid does not come with flex wrapping what you can just do is like specify what you can do is to specify what's different between justify content and justify self um Justify content, I believe that justify content is the one you give to the parent element. And justify self is the one you give to like the self, the the child element. Justify content is the child items. You are giving it to the child items. Where do you want to place the child items, right? Do you want to place them at the top, at the bottom? Okay, I'm going to try to do this right now. I'm going to do the justify content of center. 
justify item i think you justify item okay yeah so this is what it does by it just you see what it, it does by it just pushed everything to the center for it so that's what justify content or justify items does now for justify self it's something that has like give to the child element so maybe here that I'm selecting all the child elements, I can give the justify self um of I think there is left right and something like that. I'm going to give you the justify self of right. What happens? I'm trying to figure out. Hmm. Left. So basically, it won't, it won't do anything, sure, because there's no space. I think it's taking up the entire space of the um the parent's container. But if there's like space, that visible space that you can see in the parent's container, yeah, you will see that that's what you use justify self to do. Okay. So um, this is for flex items. This is for flex items. Now for grid items, um, it's still very much pretty much the same thing, but just that this time around, instead of using the easy display of grid. Now grid displays everything in column for you. Like columns, like I would say something like horizontal column columns for you. So now it's not it's like it's almost like it's it's like on one column, everything is on one column because we have not specified the grid templates columns. So um the grid template column is used for like drawing how many columns that you want. For example, if I want it to like, if I want to have, I have nine plus four elements. Let's say, let's say that um, I want to give them, I want to give four columns, right? And I want each four columns to take like one fraction of the column. So that would be like one fr, one fr, one fr, one fr. So this, what this does is that it will give like, look at how it is, you see that? Very nice, very fine. So what it does is to like, give it like four columns each, right? That is what basically what this does. It gives like four columns here. So instead of writing this thing, I can use a function called repeat. And I say repeat it four times and give it one fraction of the column. So this is just going to do the same thing for me, right? So these are the templates columns by default. So you can go ahead and give them a gap if you want. A gap is like the space between them. So I don't think there'll be much difference for the gap. Why? Because gap, there are already gaps here. Wait, okay, I just, let me just give it the gap. Um, let me say grow gap. Real gap of um ten pixels. Yeah, real gap is like horizontal gap. So this this looks much nicer. Yeah. So this is how it is. This is how it looks like for a grid item. So what if um this one now that you can we can see here that it's one. So there's something that I can do. I want if I want now this one now that's looking odd. I can make it span from here to here to take up the entire space. So how do I do that? I just first of all locate the element, which is I think the last element here. I'll use inline styling. I'll give it um, a grid each um column. So grid column, you can specify the start column. So I want this to start from one. And remember, I have four columns, right? So one, it counts from one, two, right? From here to here, three, four, five. I have four columns. 
So whenever you want to see, like, you want to span, you want it to, like, cover the entire column, you have to, like, make sure that the ending, it starts from one and it's ending plus one of the column. We have four columns, so adding one to four is five. If I put five, it will properly span everything for me. Yeah, what's, 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 okay. What is this now? Just cut it. Just cut this. We just cut this. Give it a class of last. Select it here. Put last. Fish. Yeah, I don't even understand why this one is not working now. Shit. Yeah, I can't see what this is. Oh, you confused. Um I'm just trying to say basically that if I want this thing now, this last block of this last block that I say I want it to cover everything like to cover all the whole columns I'll just do what I'll just specify a grid column start and a grid column and that means you should start from here if I want to span everything it should start from here and end right here right that's what I was trying to that's what I was trying to do here start from this place and end right here but I'm trying to figure out why it's not even working. Mm, F12. Trying to figure out why that last element is not doing as it's supposed to do. Okay. So why, 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 why is it not spanning everything here for me? Oh my God, how to? Let me move this thing. Let me move this I think one of the reasons might be I didn't give the container elements. <coughs> Sorry for that noise. Mm, let me give the width of um, a max width actually. A max width. Yes, I'll just give the width. Width of 400 pieces. Ah, okay. Better. No, I have to figure out why this. I'll change this to gap. Give it like a column gap and a row gap. Okay, awesome. I want to span this thing. Why is it not working? Does last. Okay. I don't even understand why this one is not working now. It's not even applying the styles at all, at all. Like, it's not even applying the styles at all. Okay, one over two. Yeah, I don't even under, I don't understand why this is not working, but this guy does what he does. Okay. That's what he does. Let me see the question that someone dropped. No, you don't need to do that, please. You don't need to enclose anything with spam. Don't don't 
span is used for text when you want to select in a particular text and apply a particular style to it that's where you use span to do that span you don't use span something like that please don't try it span is an inline element you get and div is a block level element so it doesn't it, it don't even like work at all so i'm try trying to figure out why it's behaving in a rude manner like that okay See what I'll do. I'll just leave it there and try another one. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll just move the class here and put it in a random class here. Let's figure out if it's working. This is new to me actually. This is like between it to me okay let me check let me check the one that i did before because i know i did something like that in the one that we were supposed to do it's not this one mm, this one yeah this one so it has a layout i think this is the layout for it you know logo flex Okay. okay, and grid, okay, display grid gap, okay, items, last, okay, this is basically the same thing I did with that one, so, okay, it has a height, a height, a height is not even necessary, Basically, um, I don't even know what, what is happening with this. Why it's not like spanning the everything. Okay. okay, I think I'll try for him. Just, um... Yeah, I think it has gone that now. Yes, it does. See, it does. She oh, 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 yes. Oh, my God. 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 So, look at what happened. I figure out what happened here. You know, I, we gave this to 100, 100 pixels, right? So, um, it's not even going to work because of that 100 pixels that we gave. It's, it's, only, it's already spanning everything. How I need because this one now, you can see that it's not taking up the entire space, but shifting this one to this end. Edge is that is I gave it one over four. This start from here and stop here. Five will be stop here. So you can see that it has shifted to out back. So that's what I'm going to um, redo everything here. Yeah, and I'm going to give it that one over five, and I'm going to give it the width of hundred percent to take up the entire width of the of the grid container. I'm going to specify important to it to override any specific and voila you can see bar it started from here and stops here so what if i give it um one over four you will see where it will stop now you see by one over three see where it stops one over two it's still on display so one over four one over five to take up the entire space right so this is like how you work with grid with flex and positions property Oof, i think i've done justice to these things any more questions are you guys following along do you have questions Grid row start. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, it should be grid row start. Grid row. No, it shouldn't be grid row. It should be grid column start and grid column end. But if you want to speed up things, you can use the short hand property like margin. You know, you, I, I explained the one for margin. Um, you can use grid column. And when you do grid column, you can specify stats by how I did one slash. End. so you can do start slash end right 
So what it will do is, for example, one over five, one is the grid column start, and um, five is grid column end. Uh -huh. Now, grid row, it's not going to be grid row because our what we have here is grid template columns, not grid template row. So we have three columns here. This is a column. One, one, two, three. Oh, this is a column. No, a row, a row is like this. One, two, three, four. Right? But we are specifying the columns. We are specifying it horizontally. That these are columns. If it's for rows, if it's rows now, it's going to be, I feel like it's going to be, um, everything here is going to be on four lines. Let's, let's try grid template row. This is a grid template column. I'm, on, I'm starting to get scared because this checks like, checks like, checks like, wow. I don't know how many times this person sent me that message. Um, grid template rules. So you see actually what I mean. And I'll change it to grid rule. I'll just comment out this first for, for now. I'll comment out this because it doesn't matter here. You can see that. You can see that's like position them by row by row. So look at what I'm going to do here. I'm going to give it um, a good row of two. Maybe it's just two times. Because I feel like it will not even do anything. It will not even do anything. Still, because row is just like straight. Ahead, ahead. No difference. Nope. I'll just... Just to so you can see that there is nothing, it does not even do anything here, right? That's why it will, usually most of the time we work with columns. Is this template rules or template rules? Even even myself. Oh, it's rules, right? But that's not what we want to do. We want to work with columns. You can see, like, you can just take a look and you can see, like, the difference. The difference is very clear. So, um, some can I, please, is this clear enough? Some can I? Um, Johnny, I think he's not around. Yes, is he around. Is he Any other question? Yeah, no, no, no. Okay. So, Roy, I don't the when will I? Is are you people okay now? So, I should be receiving your submission tomorrow or the next, right? Or even today, so you can do it today if you at least really in you, you can do it today. Um, so I believe that's the end of this, and I hope like you really understood this a lot. Awesome, okay. I, I, I yes, have a question, right? But not in this, okay. Um what is what is, let me see if it's something i can go through right now what is which place it's not about what you thought now hmm? it's not about what you just thought now okay okay javascript so so what we're going to happen um i have to check slack a uh, what space on slack because i think i have some messages or some things to do there so i'm going to like check it we're going to have that conversation maybe tomorrow because oh, I did, I've done a lot of work now. I'm very, very tired. I'm going to go meet tomorrow to my WhatsApp, okay? Send me a Google Meet tomorrow to my WhatsApp. So um, I think this has been an amazing class so far, and thank you all for joining. Expecting your submission tomorrow. I'm going to stop live streaming, and bye-bye. Good night. Stop streaming.